Alright, hello everyone. My name is Bowman, as you guys already know. As growing up as a little kid, you guys know that I'm from a third world country and poverty and everything was part of the lifestyle. So as growing up there, I had to find things to do and that was to play soccer, work, or go out and have fun with like my little friends and stuff. But as a little kid, everyone always has an idol. As, as an athlete, I had an idol, I, an idol to look up to, and that was Cristiano Ronaldo. He, the reason I look up to him so much is because he's grown up, as him growing up as a little kid, he's had a similar lifestyle. And that's what similarity has in like poverty and struggling in life and finding ways to do things and have fun. So today I will be talking about two main things about Cristiano Ronaldo, and that's his uh, backstory and his lifestyle. Okay. And then Cristiano's backstory is he was born and raised in Portuguese Portuguese island in Madeira. And at a young age, Cristiano was diagnosed with a disease of like heart heart racing heart racing to failure, and it caused him to slow down what he was doing, and that was. He was on the track of becoming a professional, but at, the, at a young age, he decided that he needed to get surgery done for this. And this is what made him like slow down and like not be on track to where he needed to be and playing professional. And then he went, he went undergoing surgery and everything went well, but he struggled for a couple of years. But instead of stopping and saying he quit because his father and his mom told him to quit, he decided not to because of his big desire and his passion to play soccer. And then he began playing for his his senior club, which is Sporting FC, at the age of 15. But the year before that, he was a popular kid at school because of his athletic ability and he was quick and fast, and everyone knew him as that kid. But at the age of 14, he got expelled out of school because he threw a chair at a teacher because she was disrespecting him and he never went to school again. And then, at the age of 20, Cristiano Ronaldo lost his father due to alcoholism, liver condition failure, and he said that that was one of the biggest heartbreaks he's ever undergone and went through. So I feel like him going through that kind of influenced him to become better and to become better and better. And I think that that's why he's even greater than anyone that's in the game today. So. The second topic that I will be talking about is his life story. And at the age of 23, Ronaldo won his first Ballon d'Or and FIFA World Player of the Year, which means that he he worked harder than everyone and he scored more than everyone and he he just he he what's it called? He went through so much to go to where he is and he did that in such a short, short period of time and he overcame everyone in the soccer profession. So I think that's amazing to know that someone going through so much is able to overcome everything and just do what he was doing at the age of 23. And then after that, he decided to transfer out of England to Spain at the age of 25. And it became the most, most expensive transfer, which was for $80 million a year. And that shows that how much how much work he, he's able to put in and everything. And then since the year 2012, he's been signed with Nike, and he's been wearing Nike, and he's overgone everything with Nike. He is also a big donator, and he's a charity. He has charities and everything he donates, but the, the biggest donations he's made was his yearly earnings to the city of Libya, and he, he donates to the schools, to the hospitals and he donates blood to every to as much as he can. That's why he doesn't have tattoos. As much as you know a lot of athletes have tattoos. And I know that he doesn't because he he wants to donate to charities and to to this and that and he just and everyone looks up to him as that person. Even though a lot of people see him as a negative person on the field because he's too serious. But I feel like he's also got a passionate passion about everything else and poverty and everything that he's been through. So in July 2019, Ronaldo was accused for rape, and this was something that was 
hard for him to go through because of what he's going through as a soccer player and athlete. And I have to worry about so many things. And I feel like as this, he was in Vegas with some friends and then I guess he brought someone over to his hotel or whatever. And the next day she accused him of rape, but the prosecutors in Las Vegas couldn't, couldn't go beyond further just because of uh, an accusation or just the default of saying that he did. But, but later on the prosecutors found out that she was lying about that and she just wanted to pay, to have paid for all that. So I think that's something that athletes also go through and actors and everyone that you just have to go through a life of being celebrity. And then to conclude this speech, I will restate the two topic ideas, which was Cristiano's backstory and how he was diagnosed with all these problems with everything and how poor he was and everything. And then his lifestyle, which is, he's a, he is the number one paid athlete in the world right now and the number one on social media. So him being famous at the age of 23 where he won almost where he became the best player in the world, which states that he's worked harder than everyone. And then to finish off, I'm gonna tell you a little story and then of how he really became pro and how he got a transfer sign. Is he was in a he was in his final match of the season and a man, Manchester United coach came up to him and said that whoever scores three goals in this game will move on and get a transfer deal of 80 million. And him and his buddy were playing up top and they were one-on-one -on -one breakthrough or whatever and the goalies all out and stuff. And they both had two goals and then his friend decided to pass the ball to him because he knew that he, Cristiano was better than him and that he had the ability to move on. And I feel like that's something to think about as friends and he scored that goal and that was his third and then Ronaldo got signed or whatever. But to this day, Ronaldo has bought him a house, has bought him a car, and he still looks back to him as a friend and as a good lifestyle experience too, which shows that he's a good person and I think that's why I chose him. Thank you.